What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm working on a farmhouse and this is actually a lot of fun because this is a build for my current Let's Play that I'm doing over on my channel here on YouTube. Um, it's the pack legacy challenge where essentially you just, it's basically just a legacy challenge where you play through all the packs, like all the different packs. So all expansion packs, game packs, stuff packs. Um, that's essentially what it is. It was written by um, Rosanna TXT, a beautiful, amazing, wonderful creator. And I will of course link that um, legacy challenge in the description box down below. And I'll also link the playlist for the um, episodes that I have done so far of the Let's Play. I've only done seven episodes so far, so we only started it a little bit ago. And yeah, so this house is for that challenge, but other than that, you could just use it for whatever you want. Honestly, it's pretty generic, but I was building it with that um, family or that household in mind. And this is a fixer upper farmhouse in the world of Brindleton Bay, as you can probably tell by the surroundings uh, by this lot. It's on one of the more secluded lots all the way in the back of the world so it's very much like surrounded by forest and trees and for this lot specifically there is a little pond where you can do some fishing you can't really see it but it's like very nearby the house uh, so that is really cute and also perfect for the household that I'm playing so far. And I thought it would be really fun to turn this into a fixer upper. One, because it's just a lot of fun to build. And two, the Sims that I'm playing with, they are not very rich. Like they don't have a lot of money. They currently live in a rental. I, they, I let them live in a uh, residential rental. So they don't actually own a house at the moment. And they don't actually own, like they don't have a lot of money. They do own their furniture so we can sell that and then that way we'll have some money to spend but I definitely do have to save up a little bit before I can have my sims move in here um, but yeah for that reason I really wanted to try and keep the cost down as much as possible try and keep it very affordable but still like have it be a fun build to, to like basically just to work on and have it be somewhat interesting so I didn't want it to be completely empty. So what I decided to do is I just turned it into a fixer upper. So it's essentially a finished house but there are some empty rooms. The house has three bedrooms total. Um, you could turn it into a four bedroom house. That's what I did for the floor plan initially but um, I, I did make it so that we had three bedrooms upstairs but two of them were so small I was like you know what I might as well just turn this into one bigger bedroom and then if need be if we do end up having like a big family if we end up having uh, more than two kids then we can always turn the one big bedroom into two bedrooms so uh, the way I did it is there are two bedrooms upstairs one bedroom downstairs and then there are two bathrooms too so we have one hall bath upstairs and one hall bath downstairs and we also have a little hobby room off to the side which I actually decided to turn into a gemology room room um, because one of the sims that I'm playing for the household uh, she is into gemology she, cr she creates jewelry and she also sells that in yard sales which we actually make the majority of our money off of uh, it's it's really quite lucrative and it's just a lot of fun to do as well because it's still a new hobby to the sims it only came to the game like a couple weeks ago so to me it's still a lot of fun I just I really enjoy that hobby I think it's really cool um, so yeah, we have a cute little hobby room and we have a nice big backyard. Um, and like I said, some of the rooms are empty. The one big bedroom upstairs is still empty. I just um, made it so that it looks like people have just, or Sims have just moved in. So I just placed a bunch of like moving boxes and just like boxes in general and make it look a little bit, um, you know, like move in ready like that. And I think that would be a lot of fun for gameplay as well. And also the rooms just aren't completely finished. We have a fully functional kitchen. We have a nice living room and one fully functional bedroom downstairs um, and also an office upstairs. It's all functional, but it's not by any means finished. We have all the necessary furniture, but it's still very empty. And overall, it just, um, you know, it could use some TLC. It definitely needs a little bit of love and it needs a little bit of a paint job here and there as well. And I also had a lot of fun with like the mold decorations, the stains and stuff. So I put a whole bunch of like mold and 
and just other suspicious little stains like on the walls, on the floors. I didn't want this house to be completely disgusting. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want there to be like trash everywhere and have it be gross in that sense. I just wanted it to be like a fixer upper that needs some love and a paint job and it needs some renovations for sure. You can also tell by the bathrooms like they're not very nice, but they are functional and I was able to like really keep the cost down in that um I just really use the cheapest stuff and it's it's really not pretty, but it's a lot of fun. So yeah, that's essentially what we're working on today. And I thought a farmhouse would be cute because let me tell you a little bit about this legacy challenge that I'm doing and the household that I essentially built this for. It's two uh, female Sims, Hazel and Jane. They did get married, they eloped, and they had a really cute little, just like a tiny wedding. It wasn't a party by any means. They, uh, they essentially just eloped and it was really cute. And they live together and they are going to have kids at some point in the near future. I don't know how many, at least one, because of course this is a legacy challenge. So we need to keep the legacy going. So we need at least one kid to be the heir for Gen 2, essentially. But I think I want them to have two kids. I don't know why, but I feel like that would be cute and that would really suit them to have two babies. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. But Hazel is the heir of this uh, pack legacy challenge. And the pack we're focusing on is outdoor retreat. So Hazel actually is currently in the outdoor um, enthusiast aspiration. So she goes camping a lot um, and Jane, her wife goes with her, but not all the time. Jane isn't really the most outdoorsy person, though she has started to embrace it more now that she is with Hazel, of course. Um, so she learned that from her. She learned to love it. And um, but yeah, she doesn't always go camping because Hazel just has this aspiration to complete. And sometimes it's raining and like Jane doesn't really want to go, you know, like that sort of a thing. So she goes camping by herself from time to time. Um, and it is her dream to move into a house that is surrounded by forest, by trees in a more secluded area, you know, where she can just embrace nature a bit more. They're currently living, like I said, in a rental and it's in Willow Creek in a little bit of a more like dense area. And it's Hazel's dream to move into a secluded area, like a beautiful house surrounded by nature, essentially. So that's where this house comes into play. And since they don't have a lot of money, I wasn't able to like make, like build her dream house and have her purchase that. But I think it'd be so fun to work on this fixer upper over time. They're still both young adults, by the way. They are, it's almost their birthdays. I believe they're turning into adults in like a few days. Um, in game time, but um, yeah, they're still very young and they definitely have a lot of time to just like work on their dream house and fix it up and renovate it over time. I think that would be such a cute, like little extra gameplay challenge that I just kind of add. It's not actually part of the challenge, but I thought it'd be fun and it would add something to the gameplay. So that's what we're doing. And it'd be fun to like have them work on this house and then they have this beautiful house to leave their children, you know, like it's like when they get older, I think that would be really fun as well, because obviously with this legacy challenge, we'll be focusing on different packs for each generation. So we're not going to stay here forever. At some point, we are going to sell like the renovated version of this house and probably move on to the next world, to the next pack. Um, but I really thought that even though Brindleton Bay, of course, isn't part of the outdoor retreat pack, I feel like it would still make a lot of sense because, um, you know, it's super secluded and it's so like it's surrounded by nature and it just it's perfect for Hazel, essentially. And then um, Jane, she is, like I said, not like she has learned to embrace nature, but it isn't like it's not where she started. She is more of an indoorsy type of person and she is in a public relations sort of career. So she is like doing like marketing kinds of stuff like for her career, but she has actually found a new hobby that I already talked about a little bit before. She is into jewelry making um, these days, which is something she, um, she recently started doing and she really, really enjoys it. And she definitely wants to take it to the next level too. So that's why I, why I really wanted to give her a little hobby room in here. 
Um, Hazel, by the way, is in the writing career. She is a freelance writer, which she likes it. She really loves to read. She loves books. She loves to write too. But since like she is a very outdoorsy person and she just loves nature, that's her passion. Like she loves to read and she is in a career that she somewhat enjoys. But if she is cooped up inside too much, she definitely gets unhappy. She doesn't enjoy it as much. So if it would be possible for us to at some point be able to sell enough like jewelry and gemstones and actually make a good living off of that, then Hazel would definitely consider quitting her job so that she can go camping a bit more often. And um, for this challenge, we also actually have to um, finish a couple of collections. We have to finish the fish collection and also the insects collection. And that is a lot of work. So I definitely need to spend so much time trying to catch all those bugs and trying to catch all the fish. For some base game fish, I actually have to enter into secret worlds too. And then that requires skills. And it's, it's definitely not easy. There is a lot to this challenge, especially this first generation. And um, like I said, it's not easy, but it's a lot of fun. So if at some point Hazel can quit her job, and that would be like financially possible, then I would definitely consider it. Uh, Jane definitely loves her job, so she is not gonna quit her job, though she has this side hustle, of course, as well, now with the gemstones and the jewelry, and that really just helps us out in that um, in that regard. So I feel like that balance uh, makes sense, and um, yeah, it's, it's just so much fun to play. And here you can see we are moving on to, or we actually already have moved on to the inside of this house, and like I said, I didn't really want it to be finished by any means. I wanted it to be playable, but it's not nice. So we definitely have some some very cheap furniture that um, you definitely want to replace over time. The living room here is uh, is quite empty. We have a little lounge area and a bookcase, but that's about it. And then for the rest, we just have a bunch of boxes around the place to really make it look like people have just moved in and the house is not done by any means. And then here we have a little kitchen. I actually really like how the floor plan came together for this house. I can't lie, I think it's really cute. It's very closed off, but I feel like for an old farmhouse like this, that actually makes sense. So yeah, it's very closed off. We have this kitchen here in the back that is not too big, but spacious enough where we can have enough counter space and also actually fit in a, um, a dining table. So for these renovations, what I'm thinking is I don't really want to change the floor plan because I really like the floor plan and just like how it's laid out right now. And I think it makes sense for this house. And um, it also just really fits the house because the house is old. They're going to renovate it. But like, I feel like they still want to embrace the old farmhouse style of it all. So I don't really want to mess with the floor plan, but I do want to just like upgrade the kitchen or maybe we could even keep these same kitchen counters, but just upgrade the appliances and pick a different swatch for the counters to make it look like it. they sanded it down and painted it or something like that. Um, but of course, I want to swap out all the floors and wallpapers and just furniture in general. Um, maybe uh, work on the landscaping a little bit, even though I really enjoy the overgrown look and feel of the house. I think it'd be nice to like tone it down a little bit and make it a little bit more manicured and structured. I think that would make sense for this. Um, and then here, as you can see, off of the living room to the side of the house, we have this tiny little hobby space that I wanted to try to keep as simple as possible because again, I was really trying to, I wasn't really working with a budget, but I was really trying to keep the cost down as much as possible. So no unnecessary clutter or decorations, but um, definitely wanted to put a gemology table in the hobby room and also just some jewelry related like, hobby like decorations but here for example in the bathrooms i uh, i chose the cheapest items that i could find that i also felt like would fit the vibe because shower tub combos of course aren't cheap in the game but this base game one is definitely the cheapest one we have and um, i feel like it makes sense to have that here and then here downstairs we also have the main bedroom of the house um, I really like that there is a bedroom downstairs for gameplay purposes. I think that's a lot of fun. And then also 
we could use one, uh, we could leave one bedroom empty upstairs, which is I think gonna be the first nursery. And then the second bedroom upstairs, I turned into an office because like I said, Hazel is a freelance writer. So she does need a little space to actually sit down and work on her books. Uh, we don't need an office for that. So if we do end up having two kids and we do end up needing the office to be a bedroom for the second kid, then that's no problem. We could just move the uh, laptop to the dining table or whatever, or we can just find a different spot to put a small desk. But like I said, I'm not planning on keeping Hazel in the writer career or in her freelance writing career forever because it's gonna burn her out at some point and um, we're gonna at some point realize that she it makes her unhappy and she needs to quit and she needs to spend her time outside make money fishing because actually she already maxed out the fishing aspiration that's the aspiration we started with um which is also part of the goals for these challenges or for this challenge is the um air has to finish the both the fishing aspiration and the outdoorsy uh, outdoor enthusiast aspiration. So we already did the fishing one and she is level 10 fishing and she catches all the good fish. So if anything, she can just make some money off of that as well. I think that would be really helpful too. Um, so yeah, this is the little office space that I was talking about. And then the other bedroom is empty. I just put a bunch of moving boxes in there. And then here upstairs, we have the office space. I'm planning on bringing our laptop that we already have. So I didn't actually put a computer in this house, which also is very effective in keeping the cost down. Um, and I think that would be realistic. There is a TV downstairs, so your Sims can use that for, um, you know, to keep their fun up and stuff like that. And there is a bunch of bookcases. Uh, and Sims can actually do a lot from their phones these days as well, which is nice. So you don't actually need a computer for everything anymore. Of course, for the writing career, we do need it. But like I said, we'll bring our own laptop. The Sims are also both very active. So I put a punching bag in the backyard. I thought that would be cool. And then for the rest, the backyard just has a couple of planter boxes, a nice picnic table. We do have a gemstone or a diamond. No, what's it called? Crystal, crystal tree, <laughs> that's what it is. We have a crystal tree. So I'm planning on bringing that over and putting it in the backyard. And then we have a nice spacious back porch as well with a um, small dining table. And I actually also put the handiness table in because we need to work on our handiness skill in order to enter into the secret world of Oasis Springs where we can find a couple of fish that we need in order to complete the collection. So there is a lot going on in this challenge and I had a lot of fun building this house um, for that challenge, but I am almost done here with the speed build portion. I'm just putting in the final few decorations and little benches and stuff, and then that's it. So let's jump into the game and I'll show you the farmhouse in real time. So here we have the farmhouse in the game. I love this lot. I feel like it's been so long since I've built anything here and it's just such a beautiful area and like I said there is a little pond here which I didn't actually know that but yeah there's a pond here which is perfect because again Hazel is into fishing so that's actually perfect for her and then back here we have the house so we have this um, nice front garden type of a situation with these broken fences everywhere that definitely needs some fixing there's a bench out here and some planter boxes boxes, a nice front porch, of course. And we also have a backyard here. So this garden with crops is not actually functional, but I thought it would be a nice way to fill in the space without actually spending any money. So that's good. And then maybe down the line, we could turn this into like a farm area or we could like create a chicken coop or something like that. I think that would be really cute. But yeah, for now, we just have this debug crop situation to basically just fill in the space. We have some some planters here and punching bag and then this back porch here with a nice dining table a rocking chair and the handiness table and then out front here we have the porch which is a little bit messy so this definitely needs some cleaning and then over here we have the entryway space so you can tell that there's definitely some mold going on and this place could definitely use a little bit of a paint job but yeah this is the entryway the hallway um, off of the hallway we have a bathroom very simple, but 
you know, effective. And then off of the hallway on this side, we have the main bedroom of the house. They actually have a nice back door here too, which is really nice. And yeah, just a bed and a dresser and again, moving boxes, of course. Then through here is the living room. I love the lighting this time of day. It's really nice and it just looks very cozy. We have a fake fireplace here, a really cheap TV and just really cheap, not super nice furniture. Though I do really like this couch. That's kind of fun. There is a bookcase back here and some more boxes, but that's basically it. And then over here we have the kitchen. The kitchen's not too bad. And I feel like it would look already so much better if you just were to put in different tiles on the floor and on the wall and upgrade some appliances. And then really, it already looks so much better. And I just really like that there is a back door off of the kitchen here to the back as well. And there's definitely enough space to put in a slightly bigger dining table so we can have four chairs around it. And then over here off of the living room, we have this hobby space that, you know, it really depends on what your Sims need or want to do. But for my Sims specifically, they need a gemology table. So I decided to turn this into their little hobby space, little crafting room. Then going upstairs, we have the tiniest landing. This bedroom over here is empty. So you can do with this whatever you want. There is a nice closet in here, which is really nice. And then on the other side, we have have another bedroom, which also has a nice built-in wardrobe. And I turned this into a mini office setup, if you will. Loving this bookcase from Discovery University, by the way. I haven't used this in forever and it was actually perfect for this build. Also some more like junk around here, just like some storage. And then over here we have another hall bathroom upstairs. The layout for this one is a little awkward. So this definitely needs a little bit of help, but that is basically it for this fixer upper. So this Fixer Upper Farmhouse is up on the gallery. I did technically build it sideways. As you can see, I was not aware, but apparently this is the front of the lot and I built it sideways, but that's okay. But yeah, that makes it so that it looks a little sad on the gallery thumbnail, but that is, um, that's just what it is. I built it on a 30 by 20 in the world of Brindleton Bay. It comes in at just under 35,000 simoleons. So for a house this spacious, I feel like it's really not that bad. And it has three bedrooms and two bathrooms, but you could easily turn it into four or maybe even five bedrooms if you were to use the little hobby room downstairs as a bedroom as well. But that's going to do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this build. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery. Like I just showed you, my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can follow me on Instagram, Threats, and on TikTok if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you would like to get notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.